Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar. My name is Samantha, and I am in client services here at the Retirement Group. I'm going to be moderating this webinar for you today, so you're going to see me throw some useful links into the chat. One of the first ones will be a link to book an appointment with an advisor, as well as a link to our LinkedIn account, where you can view all uh, updates of our upcoming webinars, as well as our education center, where you can view all of our past webinars recordings. Um, today, we're going to be speaking to you about how you can unlock the potential advantages of an HSA account and the recent increase in maximum contributions. You'll learn about the triple advantage and how HSAs offer unique and substantial tax benefits. Our speaker today is Patrick Ray, and I'll be bringing him on shortly. But before I bring him on, I just have to remind you that although we work very closely with both active and retired employees of Fortune 500 companies. We are not affiliated nor endorsed by any specific company. The retirement group is a completely independent group of financial advisors, so please keep that in mind. And after Patrick's presentation today, we are going to be coming back on and I'll be asking him any questions you may have entered into the Q&A box while he was speaking. So please feel free to ask away. We love getting your questions and answering them. It's completely anonymous, so you don't have to worry about that and we'll answer as many as possible uh, after Patrick's presentation. And with that, I'm gonna bring on our speaker, Patrick Ray. Hi, Patrick. Thank you, Samantha. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, as Sam had mentioned, my name is Patrick Ray. I'm one of the senior advisors here with the Retirement Group. And as you know, we bring from uh, time to time different topics and things that we like to talk to our clients and prospects about to help them plan for one of the most important financial decisions that they'll ever have to make, which is retirement. And so we often get asked how to maximize retirement in the context of where they can save money or where you can potentially save extra funds or do things that are maybe over and above what the average person is doing, which is potentially just participating in the 401k that you might have at your employer. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the updates with respect to the savings plans, uh, as far as what options that you might have. And some of this is going to include something that you may not be familiar with, which is uh, a referral to something uh, talked about often in the healthcare community uh, on a health savings platform, and they're called health savings accounts. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, the potential opportunity that you may have or that you may have overlooked in the event that you're uh, in this transition of planning and uh, trying to gain momentum to get to your ultimate goal of retirement at some point. So in case you haven't heard of the retirement group, before. We have been in business for over 30 years, helping Fortune 100 company employees plan for and transition into a successful retirement. And one of the many tools that we have to bring to the table is this webinar platform where we try to bring you uh, the most up-to-date and accurate information and hopefully some things that maybe you haven't heard before in an effort to engage in a discussion with you potentially if you're looking for a partner in retirement. As we have offices nationwide and we have an extreme uh, intimate knowledge with your 401ks and your savings plans and your pension plans and your healthcare benefits and so forth that most of the companies that uh, who uh, individuals will be listening and watching this webinar uh, will be familiar with. And so uh, in the end, the thing that you might get the most value of is a cash flow analysis. Uh, this is uh, an effective stress test of your overall financial and retirement plans to see if you're on track. And even if you have three, five, or maybe even longer uh, years to go before you technically retire in your eyes, uh, it may be a very valuable tool to make sure that you're on pace and that you are thinking about things that maybe you weren't exposed or thought uh, about before. And that's what this webinar this afternoon is to talk about. Um, in the event that you haven't followed us on LinkedIn, I encourage you to do that. That's uh, by taking a picture of this QR code that's on the screen now. You'll get access to our LinkedIn page where they're specific to companies that we uh, uh, transition and follow uh, and talk to employees about uh, their retirement plans and benefits. And uh, you might find some very useful uh, time to uh, uh, follow us on that page if you're not already doing so. So let's talk about some very basics at the, the beginning of our discussion today, which is what a 401k is, right? Most of you know what a 401k is. This is simply a retirement savings plan that's sponsored by your employer. Um, your contributions that you make can be made on a pre-tax basis and they grow uh, tax deferred. 
Um, most of the time, there's also options that you have that you can put money in on a Roth plan uh, or in the Roth part of your 401k. And you can also potentially put money in after taxes, which doesn't give you the current tax benefit today because there's no reduction of income for the deposits that you make today if you put it in after tax. But you might find that it's the best uh, ultimate long-term plan because you can pull those monies out and put them in a Roth IRA when you ultimately leave the payroll. Um, and in most cases, these 401k plans often have some kind of matching or contribution from your employer, which is uh, an effective free money deposit to your 401k. So we wanna make sure that in all aspects, you're at least participating to the very minimum of what the company actually matches in your plan itself so that you get the free funds that are available to you so that you're maximizing your plans in an overall uh, big picture. And then as far as an HSA is concerned, as I mentioned at the beginning, HSA stands for health savings account. And this is a tax advantaged pool of money that you can put together and save for qualified medical expenses. Now, this is typically available to individuals who are enrolled in high deductible plans where you have the majority of the risk at the beginning in case you go to the doctor or you have a medical emergency of some sort that you'll have a limit that you'll be required to fulfill before your insurance kicks in. And so when that happens, uh, funds that need to be available can be utilized from something like an HSA where you can pull out those monies on a tax and penalty free basis. And most of the time, those are able to not just be used with your healthcare plans, but what often goes overlooked is the unique option to utilize some of these funds to potentially add or enhance your overall retirement savings. Now, um, as far as the differences, we'll talk about a number of these things. We're going to cover some of the tax advantages. We'll talk about the contribution increases, which are indexed for inflation and some of the benefits of using HSAs for retirement plans, for retirement savings, and a, couple, uh, a supplement to your actual current savings in your uh, 401ks and, and the, uh, pensions in case some of you have pension plans. And then uh, talk also about the benefits of the medical expenses that you get to utilize your HSA for and the difference between some of those as far as your employer and what they contribute or what they might not contribute to. So as far as the tax benefits are concerned, you've got HSA benefits, which are uh, contributed to and growth and withdrawals from this qualified pool of money is tax-free when you use it for qualified medical expenses. And you can do that all the way up until you're age 65. Whereas as in comparison, when you pull money out of your 401k, if you had put those monies in pre-tax, then you're going to be required to pay income tax on the funds that you withdraw in addition to potential penalties in the event that you're not yet 59 and a half. Now, as far as the differences is by comparison, the HSA could provide you some additional tax advantage with respect to uh, if you're comparing it to a 401k on how you can pull those monies out that don't have the same penalty and tax complications if you're using them for qualified medical expenses. As far as this year is concerned, the contributions that you can make to an HSA have caps. So in other words, you can only put in a maximum, similar to your 401ks actually, as it turns out. And these things are indexed for inflation. And so when we have an index for inflation, one of the things that we often see do not get addressed is the additional contributions that you can make in an effort to help maximize your overall retirement savings scenario. So because the individual limits increase, uh, it means more tax-free savings for you as a healthcare and retirement option. And as your family limits, of course, increase over time, uh, those are typically indexed for inflation as well. You want to have the ability to cover some of these shorter term expenses in case you're on the hook for some medical costs that uh, in some cases maybe even were uh, unforeseen. Uh, and that's usually the way it works, right? They happen on an emergency or a, an untimely basis. And so from a HSA perspective regarding retirement, uh, they can have a unique role in supplementing your traditional retirement savings that you're accustomed to with respect to your 401k plans. And some of you have pension plans. And then I'd like to think to some level, we'd all be eligible and able to uh, obtain some funds from Social Security to some level. And so what's unique about the HSA situation is the growth potential, right? Because they offer uh, a tax-free growth scenario where you can put the future costs of these uh, expenses that you might run into from a healthcare perspective and pull them from a tax-free uh, fund. And so this can lead past retirement, which is unique all the way up until your age 65, where as long as you're using these funds for qualified medical expenses, you could in fact enjoy uh, tax-free uh, withdrawals from these pools of monies after retirement as well. Now, as far as a long-term in uh, incentive or a long-term investment is concerned, you know, HSAs can be treated for long-term growth similar to your 401ks, 
because often inside the HSAs, there are investment and mutual fund type oriented uh, positions that you can put the funds into that would grow similar in nature to your 401ks. So the key is incorporating HSAs into your retirement planning uh, could potentially increase not only the tax-free savings that you have, but the pool of money that you have ultimately that you can withdraw from to help supplement the retirement income for the rest of your life. And so from an HSA perspective on the medical side, you have um, present coverage, right, where you have your current medical expenses uh, that you would be on the hook for because maybe you have a high deductible plan. And so an HSA can come in and help cover these out-of-pocket expenses with respect to these high deductible plans. I know my deductible and my plan personally is uh, for a family up to $14,000, I believe. So I'm on the hook for the first $14,000 of expenses that I can use my HSA to pull from uh, and pull those funds from penalty and tax-free and put those towards my medical expenses for my family, even though I'm not 59 and a half, which is kind of a, a unique uh, and opportune scenario for, for you to have an additional pool of money to pull from. And as far as the future planning is concerned, of course, you can save for future healthcare costs. And if you get to a point where you're past age 65 and knock on wood, you haven't had any unique med medical expenses that have cost you uh, a ton of money and you still have money in your HSA account, then you can just pull from those funds and those tax treatments would be related to similar what you would incur uh, from pulling monies from your pension or your 401k and basically use those as additional expenses for whatever you might choose to use them for. And so from a retirement perspective, Unused, unused HSA funds can be used for these medical expenses in and during retirement, but also beyond age 65, even though they have a different tax treatment once you get past those uh, age, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Now, as far as your employer contributions are concerned, typically your 401k contributions, as many employers, you know, uh, match a portion of what you put in, right? So from a planning perspective, one of the things we absolutely want to be certain we're doing is putting in the bare minimum of what the company that you work for contributes to the plan. So you get a 100% rate of return on what you're putting in uh, as free money coming from the company. So we want to make sure we're doing that for sure. But as far as an employer HSA contribution, some employers contribute to HSA plans but it's very, very uh, unique. It's it's way less common. And most of the companies are earmarking monies to uh, actually replace what they used to offer to employees for pension-based benefits to increase the savings that they're adding to their 401ks by contributing more into the 401k plans and not so much in uh, the HSA front. So from an employer perspective, <laughs> excuse me, the contributions are significantly enhanced so that the growth of these accounts are similar in nature. We can use those for long-term benefits uh, for sure for your retirement planning purposes. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. The power of the compound interest is something that we should talk about, obviously, because we want to try to compare these two. And since the HSA plan is not often talked about as much as a 401k, we feel like it's a unique option to enhance the pools of money that you're going to be ultimately able to pull from when you do retire at some point. And so the compound interest that's earned on both the initial principal and the interest accumulated over time, of course, is tax-free for medical benefits. And so for medical purposes, you have a unique compounding interest power uh, in your HSAs that do not get the same tax treatment as your 401k do, uh, does. But both accounts, of course, have the ability to grow over time and it helps you inflate the pools of money that are in there based on what compound interest does for those balances. But compound interest greatly enhances the overall long-term benefit and growth. And herein lies the reason why we think uh, that you should consider often overlooked, not just the 401k scenario, but how the HSA can play a role uh, in your overall retirement. And there's some flexibility within the framework of the withdrawals. As we talked about, uh, the HSA is flexible in the context of you can pull monies uh, on a tax-free basis for qualified medical expenses at any time. There's no uh, contribution limit uh, as far as, excuse me, there's no withdrawal limit on what you can take out as far as how much is in the pool that you have available to you that's in your HSA. And there's also no age restriction. So there's no penalty that uh, creates a, a problem for you if you have to withdraw money from those HSA plans to pay for qualified medical expenses. Whereas on the 401k side, you know, withdrawals could potentially be uh, an issue. If you're under 59 and a half, you've got penalty uh, problems to consider. And your plan, frankly, may not allow for in-service withdrawals that are over and above a certain amount. 
Uh, some of you may have loans on your 401k, which would also uh, inhibit some of your abilities to withdraw money while you're uh, an you know, active employee. So there is a difference between the two as far as flexibility and withdrawals for sure. And so in our eyes, uh, HSAs obviously offer a, a more competitive and flexible scenario from a withdrawal perspective. So we can't overlook the importance of how the HSAs play a role uh, in your overall planning process. From a post-retirement perspective, this is where a lot of the questions come in because once you retire, let's say you retire at 60 years old, you've got a five-year window where these HSA benefits could potentially uh, provide you a very unique opportunity to get access to tax-free monies for qualified medical expenses. Except what if you don't need the money? What if you don't have, knock on wood, any medical expenses between 60 and 65, for example? Well, the cutoff at 65 allows you to no longer contribute to the plans but it doesn't have any bearing on the pool of money that exists. So if you happen to contribute a nice chunk of money each and every year that was indexed for inflation as it is every year, and you have $100,000, for example, in your HSA account, which I've seen on a number of occasions over my uh, career, that you'll find that uh, you can utilize those to help supplement retirement expenses or, uh, and not just medical expenses. So when you're past 65, the only, the only change or the caveat is that those withdrawals that you uh, remove are taxable as income to you. So there is a difference in comparisons with respect to the post-retirement side of comparing an HSA to a 401k, but both solve uh, very useful scenarios in both pre and post retirement, uh, regardless of what your age is. So you just have to deal with the ramifications if you happen to be in a scenario where, let's call it, you're lucky enough to not have any medical expenses between the early and mid to 60s, for example. And then all of a sudden, when you hit Medicare age, you're uh, required to get some medical attention and you can utilize those funds, of course, for medical expenses as well. Um, as far as the risk factors are concerned, as I mentioned earlier, you know, a lot of these HSA plans have similar types of investments that you have opportunities to place the funds into, which are similar to what you're doing in your 401k. So there's market risks that are associated with those. And so you need to be cognizant of that for sure, because it's not like you could just put your money in, although there's an option for most HSA plans to just put your money in a fixed bucket where you can't lose any money. But many of the um, attributes to an HSA of what we're talking about is to help you uh, pass Add the back end of your retirement savings. And in an effort to do that, you might consider taking some risk in that account if you're open to it or if you're able to uh, absorb the risk from a, uh, you know, from a, a planning perspective that uh, it does subject you to market fluctuations in the event that you uh, put your monies in to some of these options. And so um, what you may consider as a combination of what your healthcare costs are is the balance between your current need uh, for what your expenses are today versus what you might need long-term. So for example, let's say you have a scenario where you're, one of your spouses in your family is not as healthy as the other spouse, and you know that there's a higher risk for you to have to absorb some medical expenses. We might wanna make sure that we're maximizing to all levels what you're putting in your HSA account, even if that means that you have to reduce what you're withdrawing in, or what you're contributing into your 401k to help maximize the tax-free money that you've got available in your HSA account to help you offset some of these, what would be expected uh, needs for some of the individuals that might not be as healthy as they'd like to be. And so certainly that's, a, uh, that's an option that we want to weigh and compare on the likelihood of you needing your HSA exposure to help offset some of these medical costs versus putting money in your 401k if the household only has so much money to contribute on a monthly basis, irrespective of where it may go. Now, of course, we talked about the difference in withdrawal penalties, and the fact is that there is potential penalties if you're using them for non-qualified withdrawal. So if you're using your uh, HSA account for non-medical related expenses, you're going to be subject to the penalties and uh, the potential tax uh, ramifications that you otherwise would in your IRAs or your 401ks as well. Um, so as far as your personal scenario goes, and from certainly a retirement and a financial planning perspective, we need to choose between these two, then we got to monitor what the needs are for these families that we're talking to to compare the differences, right? So it's not necessarily a blanket statement that we can make that says your 401k is more important than your HSA or vice versa. In our eyes, they're equally important and they should be uh, treated as such where we're contributing a comfortable amount that we're maximizing all aspects of the planning process of tax-free potential funds for medical expenses in the future. And as an example, free money that's coming as a match from your employer in your 401k, uh, depending on what your health care needs versus your retirement goals. Uh, the tax benefits, of course, should be considered with respect to your personal tax situation, especially if you have maybe a high income earner in your household 
uh, one of the spouses or where the qualified funds are coming into the household from a retirement perspective. That may matter because it may put you in a different tax bracket dependent on where you get the monies from and how they're taxed to you. So certainly we want to make sure we're uh, uh, looking and, and viewing and, and paying attention to those uh, options for the families and people that we are trying to help in an event that we're max or to help them uh, maximize in an event that something comes up uh, on their front for sure. And then the HSA, of course, uh, offers from a flexibility perspective perspective, the contributions and the withdrawal benefits that you don't get from uh, from a 401k if you're using them for qualified medical expenses. So, of course, there's some legislation changes. And frankly, this happens on a very regular basis where they're always adding to or subtracting from funds. The uh, 72T rules have changed. The minimum distribution rules have changed several times in the last few years uh, as where they were stagnant for a super long window of time. So the legislation impact uh, is always relevant to some level, it seems like, on a year-to-year -year basis. And so there's laws that are always changing that affect the contribution limits and what the actual HSAs are eligible to be paid or utilized for. Um, the 401k rules can potentially change, of course, affecting the contribution limits and tax contributions and limits and benefits and all this other stuff. And frankly, it's uh, somewhat confusing uh, on many of the fronts. And so we want to make sure that we do our best to stay on top of these rules and regulations to the greatest degree we can, especially if we've and analyze the scenario that says we may need to put a little more weighting on the HSA version of your retirement savings because of the potential need for healthcare costs uh, that you might have to absorb in your future. Um, of course, as I mentioned, the IRS uh, in least, uh, increased the, HR, uh, the HSA contribution limits uh, for 2024 and potential future legislation should always closely be monitored, as I mentioned. So we wanna stay on top of those as changes are pretty relevant on a very regular basis. Now. Uh, is an HSA an untapped opportunity? I mean, well, frankly, we believe so. I mean, it's an under underutilized uh, asset, if you will, right? Where many individuals who are eligible, they don't increase their benefits when the uh, increased limits occur, similar to your 401k as an example. Some of you may not know that there's an automatic trigger in many 401ks that allow you to continue to increase your contribution limits on an annual basis. And most of the time, you don't miss those funds and you won't even recognize that you're putting in 7% as opposed to 6% next year uh, because you typically won't miss the money on many fronts. And so um, some of these things that we feel like as an untapped opportunity, certainly on the HSA side, uh, would be absolutely relevant. And there's a lot of education that's out there on the benefits of these things and how they work and what they're used for and what the purpose would be and, and how to incorporate that, uh, incorporate that potentially into your planning process. And so uh, they're often a valuable and overlooked uh, planning tool in retirement, for sure. Uh, the recap for what we've talked about so far. So we've got, in summary, an HSA versus a 401k, where both of them offer their own unique benefits, right? And in no way am I saying you should stop putting into one to just put into the other. What we want to do is analyze every scenario to make sure you're, you're making the most of your contributions if you only have a certain amount of money per month to allocate to uh, the planning process, irrespective of where it goes. And so we want to make sure we're uh, taking that into consideration from a planning perspective, of course. We've got some tax benefits on the HSA side, for sure, from advantages and flexibility, especially if those funds are being utilized um, on a uh, uh, qualified medical expense front. But uh, there's higher contribution limits in your 401k. And frankly, you just may want to save more money in your 401ks. And uh, the ability to do that after you've maxed out what you have been available to be put based on caps in your HSA, then you just contribute the money in your 401k. Because uh, I can tell you this, in 24 years of planning, I've never had someone retire with too much money, ever. So it's impossible to save too much money. And so the real question is, if you only have a certain threshold of monies that you can push out every single month to afford, then we just want to make sure we're maximizing those benefits is basically all we have to say. Um, on the personal needs, the retirement benefits, the tax solutions, a lot of this is covered and sometimes uncovered because of needs that uh, occur uh, from planning processes because people don't have a plan. And that's really the moral of the story for many people who are over the age of 50, unfortunately. And so you want to make sure that if you're analyzing a group to work with, that you can work through some of these scenarios that are a little over and above the generalized uh, retirement planning process, right? Where they not only understand your benefits at the company, as far as your pensions, your healthcare benefits, 401ks, and so forth, um, obviously, you want to talk about the fees that you're paying when you invest or uh, in, get engaged with a, an advisory group because that's a big deal. 
And as far as your uh, investment team, do they have an investment team? What's involved? How are the uh, decisions made? And what value do they bring to the table for you? That might be the most overlooked general scenario that I've seen in my career, which is what are your expectations from an individual to gain from our expertise? What is it that you're hoping to gain? And if you can answer that question or have a list of questions that would be relevant to that, I think that goes a long way for you helping to find a, a, a good partner in retirement for sure. Clearly, you want to make sure that they offer you a detailed financial advice uh, uh, from a planning perspective, which is the cash flow analysis that I mentioned earlier. And that's a complimentary service that we all, uh, offer to folks who are interested in going through that process. And then I'm delighted to talk about that uh, if you have questions about that. But this should also be updated on a fairly regular basis. So as I mentioned, most people over the age of 50 don't have a written financial plan. In fact, 74% of Americans over 50 do not. And uh, there's just no excuse for that, frankly, because firms like ours do it for a way or as a way to utilize their um, platform uh, to introduce their services to you. I mean, let's face it, if you're looking for a partner in retirement, you want to do some homework, you want to do some due diligence, you want to find out who has your best interests in mind. And sometimes that requires you to do business with those people long before you retire so that you're prepared and, uh, and ready when you are required to make one of the most important financial decisions that you ever have to make. You don't, have, you don't just have to do that by you know opening up the old yellow pages and just picking a uh, uh, page 32 uh, on the right side and hoping that that works out. That's uh, that's not planning, right? We want to make sure that we're doing the planning uh, uh, on the greatest level that we can. And so if you're open to a meeting, you can do one of a couple of things to visit with us. Okay, first of all, you can email us at info at theretirementgroup.com. Reach out to us that way. You can call the 800 number, which is 800-900-5867, and uh, they'll put you on the calendar uh, with uh, uh, an advisor in your area to answer your questions and get you uh, in touch with uh, a qualified uh, advisor to help you with that. You can schedule some time on your calendar if you take a picture of the QR code to the left, and uh, it will get you access to a calendar where you can just schedule your own 15 to 30 minute call with someone to get the process started and see what's involved and uh, see if we can help. And then I mentioned uh, at the beginning, but again, this is the LinkedIn QR code that if you're not following us on LinkedIn, I encourage you to do that. I recommend it. So uh, with that, uh, I think I want to finish up by just simply saying, remember, from a planning aspect, you won't know what you don't know unless you visit with somebody that does know. And so in other words, some of these things as simple as this HSA thing, where you've heard of them before, but it falls on the back burner as far as an importance level is concerned. And we wanna make sure that we bring it to the forefront because there's some actual tax advantages that you might gain by utilizing them that you otherwise wouldn't get from just shoving a whole bunch of money in your 401k. So having said all that, um, I will finish up and pass the visit back on to Sam and see if there are any questions. Uh, so that'll be it uh, until the questions come up. Sam? Hey, Patrick. Yes, we had quite a few great questions come in. We'll try to answer as many as we can. The first is, if I have HSA funds, can I use them to pay for Medicare costs? If yes, what are the implications? So yeah, so I talked about the cutoff for this. And so obviously this question has to do with someone being Medicare eligible, which would lead to them being at least 65 years of age. So you can no longer contribute to the HSA once you get to Medicare age. But if you haven't utilized the pool of money that's available for benefits, then you can utilize those funds from a medical uh, perspective. And so you can help offset the need for medical expenses, for qualified medical expenses, and pull those monies from your HSA account. If you do not do that on the medical front, then you'll just simply pay ordinary income tax on whatever you withdraw to help supplement uh, retirement or to buy a car or to give the kids some money or whatever the case may be. Because of course, at 65, you're past the age of 59 and a half. So there's no penalties on your plan at that point. All righty, thank you. Um, as a 60 year old employee with a su substantial 401k balance, how can I leverage the new IRS increase to enhance my retirement savings and address healthcare expenses after I retire? 
So it sounds like this person is 60 years old and as an employee, um, I would first recommend that we make sure that we're allocating enough money to meet the match in the the event that there's a match from the employer that he or she is working for. And then um, basically we have to index our savings for inflation. So if we know that the IRS is raising the cap for what we can afford to put in the HSA account, let's just be sure that we're doing that. And so it can be as simple as just putting in the max on the HSA side, assuming that you have enough money in the household income plan uh, that allows you to not just put money in the savings plan, but also to put money and maximize what you're putting in your 401k. So you can absolutely still do both. And that's how you would leverage the increases is just simply make sure that every year, put a note on your calendar on January because it goes up every year, basically, uh, that we're ensuring that you're putting the additional funds in your HSA account, just like you would if you're increasing the contributions that you put in your 401k. That's what I recommend. Thank you. Um, How does an HSA compare to a traditional 401k or IRA in terms of tax advantages and potential savings? Yeah, I mean, that's a long-winded question, right? I mean, we talked about the differences as far as the the tax advantages. I mean, from a, a, a tax perspective, you've got super beneficial tax scenarios if you're using the HSA for medical expenses, regardless of your age. And if you're not doing that, then there's some tax complications to doing that uh, if you you pull money from your HSA and it's not medical related. And some of those same rules or similar rules apply to your 401k, especially because if you're not 59 and a half, there's also penalties involved uh, in addition to what you could potentially have to pay as far as income tax is concerned. So they both have their um, advantages as far as the tax relationship and the potential savings for both. And that's why we think it's important to analyze the two of them as a um, as a unique opportunity to ensure that you're putting away and trying to address your, your long-term retirement goals to the greatest degree you can. So we should, uh, we should absolutely look at the impact of what HSAs do and compare them to your 401k specifically, depending on what company that you work for, and ensure that we're getting the most out of those, certainly from a tax advantage and a potential savings perspective. Thank you. Uh, how can I make, mm, yes. How can I make the most of my HSA contributions and investments to maximize my retirement savings? Simple. Put in the max. <laughs> that's the answer. Uh, that, that's quite simple. I mean, when you're talking about putting contributions into your HSA account and you're asking how to maximize your retirement savings, put as much as you can in the HSA up to the cap. And that's also assuming, as I mentioned several times in the presentation, that we want to not give up the free money that's being matched on the 401k, right? So if, you're, if your employer is giving you a match on your 401k and for you to have to lessen that money to not get 100% of the return that you could have gotten from your match on your 401k because you want to put money in your HSA, let's just make sure that, excuse me, the HSA is a more important aspect from a savings perspective for you because Maybe you have an unhealthy spouse, as I mentioned, or maybe you know that you're going to have some medical expenses to deal with, and it just might make more sense to focus contributing as much money as possible up to the max in the HSA as opposed to putting money in your 401k. But obviously, we would recommend doing both uh, if you can afford to do that. All right. Um, Can I use my HSA funds to pay for long-term care expenses during retirement? Yes. Yes. Yeah, leading up to age 65, again, you're talking about monies that uh, can be paid for not just uh, long-term care expenses, but you can pay for your long-term care and premiums through your HSA account as well, which is a tax-free benefit. All right. As a reminder, I put a link in the chat. You can book an appointment with Patrick if we don't get to all questions. Uh, We have two more I think we have time for. Can I use my HSA as a retirement savings vehicle similar to a 401k or IRA? Of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully you picked that up from the presentation today that the answer is absolutely. It can be absolutely used. It can be used to uh, help supplement some retirement savings. And the key for you on the weighting of which one should serve a bigger purpose in your planning process is dictated by your, your personal scenario. So I can't speak to if it's better for you particularly to do your 401k versus your HSA if you only have so much money. But as I've mentioned a number of times, if you're allocating money and you can maximize both, that's what you should be doing. Great. And last one, what are the advantages of using an HSA as an additional savings account for emergencies? 
Well, the HSA accounts are going to grow tax free, right? So if otherwise you put money in a savings account and your plan was to utilize that money because you might have some absorbent medical expenses in a given year, then you should be using the HSA to do that, uh, frankly. But as far as just a general savings scenario is concerned, I've mentioned several times that the HSA plays a role that works in tune or in conjunction with the 401k, right? Or any other savings vehicle that you may have to save money in your retirement plan. So I encourage you to uh, consider and potentially use both. And uh, the answer is that it depends and depends on your scenario. We're delighted to talk further about that with you in the event that you have more questions. All right, I think we're out of time today, Patrick. Okay, well, lovely. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Hopefully you got some value out of spending some afternoon uh, time with us today. And uh, until next time, we'll see you. We'll be back. Take thank care. you. Thanks so much, Patrick.